Okay, so this is my podcast slash video on the Gideon versus Wainwright case, so enjoy. Okay, so some background on this case. Uh, Clarence Earl Gideon was charged with felony breaking and entering in Florida in 1963. Uh, He requested that the court grant him an attorney, but Florida state law at the time said that an attorney was only to be appointed to an indigent defendant during capital cases. So he wasn't given an attorney and he represented himself. Now he studied, but he did lose. He filed a habeas corpus petition in the Florida Supreme Court, his reasoning being that the court's denial of his request for an attorney violated his constitutional right to be represented by counsel. However, his petition was again denied by the Florida Supreme Court. So the amendment in question in this court case is the Sixth Amendment principally. Um, It designates a right to counsel in criminal cases in no uncertain terms. The question here was whether it extended to defendants in state courts. Uh, The decision made by the lower court was that they did not have to appoint a lawyer for Gideon and he challenged this by saying it violated his Sixth Amendment rights. The Fourteenth Amendment due process clause is also involved here because that more clearly extends out. Uh, The main points of congressional interest for the original amendment uh, were, you know, it was part of the Bill of Rights and it was instated to ensure the continuous presence of fair trials due to strong fears at the time of tyrannical government. Um, The president's stance on this issue when it was decided by the Supreme Court is kind of unclear because it wasn't something he talked a lot about, Uh, but Many other favorable analyses of the ruling, along with JFK's general record of opinion, would suggest that he supported the decision. Um, In this case, the Supreme Court ruling was 9-0 to in favor of Gideon, Uh, the reason being that the right to counsel is fundamental and that the Sixth Amendment applies to the states through the Fourteenth Amendment's Due Process Clause. Um, At this time, the Warren Court was in place, So Warren was a pretty liberal justice, more liberal than he was expected to be, and including him, the court had six liberal members and three conservative ones. So in addition to Warren, uh, the court included Hugo Black, Byron White, Arthur Goldberg, William Orville Douglas, John Marshall Harlan II, Potter Stewart, Tom C. Clark, and William J. Brennan Jr. Um, So even though this was you know, not a unanimously liberal court, the decision was unanimous. Um, In the consenting opinion, uh, there were a couple main areas of focus. So first, uh, they said that there was no distinction between capital and non-capital cases in this kind of situation, as the right to counsel does not contain any kind of distinction like that. Uh, Second, they said that special circumstances like that were moving out of consideration and allowing the right to counsel only in special circumstances no longer really made sense. So none of that in that area should have been considered special circumstances or not at all. Um, There was no dissenting opinion in this case. Uh, The ruling was unanimous. Um, All right, now the legacy of the case. Since it was decided, um, as far as executive enforcement goes, the right to counsel has been more heavily enforced and presidents have uh, long endorsed this position. So the changes it brought about were more noticeable at state and local levels, but um, courts at those levels were definitely held accountable for breaking the rule at a higher frequency. And then the lasting impact of this case, it was never retried. It was never really controversial as evidenced by the unanimous ruling. Um, It supports an important American constitutional right. And um, this case has helped a lot of people who might otherwise have been not represented at all or poorly represented by themselves. Uh, Personally, I agree with the Supreme Court's ruling. Um, The Constitution 
clearly supports the right to counsel, starting with the Sixth Amendment, reinforced by the Due Process Clause. And again, personal opinion, I honestly feel like even if this wasn't in the Constitution, it's the right thing to do. So um, I'm in line with the court here. All right. Thank you for listening slash watching, I guess.